That's good. So this would certainly be one of these exercises I'd start weaving in. Now, Tam's are about five or six in and you can see that she's starting to struggle a little bit. So if I want her to keep going, because I know she's got to work hard and we want to push, keep pushing, if pain starts becoming a feature or she just simply can't get off, off the chair, we are going down eccentrically and now you're going to assist yourself up with the second leg. Go down eccentrically and go up with the second leg and get that burn. Build those reps, build that capacity that way. You may even start that a little bit earlier. If they, so if they can't do one single leg sit to stand yet, all right, go in, do it eccentrically, and then assist, out, assist up, okay? Down eccentrically and assist up. It's a really good way to get that, that quad capacity going, all right? <laughs> Done, all right, don't, don't burn yourself out. All right, so that's, um, that's pretty good. Like, so you had about six or seven good, good reps there before you started failing. Yeah. Excellent for week 10 post-op quad tendon repair. Yeah, good job. <laughs> um, obviously, we want to chase a bit more reps over the next, you know, f you know few weeks and yeah, you know, whatever it may be. Um, so, <laughs> if we can get closer to fifteen uh, it, it, for running, that's where I'd probably want to see that sort of benchmark being set around the fifteen rep mark. If you can punch out fifteen reps, that that's one really big tick of the tick of the return to running program for me. Yeah. Bulgarians, are they, have you done much Bulgarian work? Cool. Uh, haven't tried. Don't haven't like tried. it. Haven't tried. Cool. So, Bulg are you familiar with them? Yeah. All right, off you go. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yep. So, Bulgarians, these are probably the thing, um, I, I love them as an exercise. I think they've got a great bang for buck, and I probably put them slightly ahead of single leg sit to stand, but I like single leg sit to stand just for that early training, early capacity building. What I like and what I'm seeing already here out of town is she's not afraid to let this knee translate forward. Now, this whole knees over the toes movement, I, I like, but I, don't, I think some people take it far too much. I don't believe we need to have a vertical shin um, and have to keep our knees back from our toes. I think there's some happy place and some middle ground. We've got to respect pain, of course. Often with people with patellofemoral joint pain, harvestite pain, they won't love going too deep and they'll probably prefer to keep a more vertical shin. But if their quad mass is really good, their quads are working nicely, they generally can tolerate a little bit of more this forward translation. How are you going with that? Yep, All right, you good? Yep, yep, cool. So here's a couple of things for you. I, once again, I want the weight and the loading going through the ball of the foot. And once again, just respecting this pain, okay? So if you see them too vertically and they don't need to be vertically, their shin is what I'm talking about, encourage them to translate forward. You can simply do that by getting a foam roller and get them to, to nudge the foam roller, okay? Put, them in, put it in front of them and get them their knee to tap it and nudge it every rep that they do. It will certainly get them translating forward. Then you can just nudge it even a little bit further forward and do it that way, okay? So there's very simple um, external cues here, that's enough. Um, you can do to get that quad going a little bit more. <laughs> you good? Yeah. All right. But yeah, be, the two biggest areas I see, people will, they'll, they'll keep it unnecessarily for too long, a really uh, vertical shin. And once again, they'll probably push more through their heel rather than the ball of their foot. So get them to translate forward if they can and their knee tolerates it. Nudge a foam roller, get the ball in the foot just to get a bit more quad. Um, hamstrings progressing through some of the hamstring work. Um, we didn't touch on it in the first um, in month, month one to month two, deadlifts. Stiff legged deadlifts would be also too a key exercise we'd introduce in that first to second month period. There's no reason why we can't carry that on through this period and we want to, but, and I'll get you to do this um, over here for us. Tim, I'll just get this out for you. All right, hold on to this bar. So if we're going to do RDLs through this period, I find that most people, if you get them to do a one-legged you know, arabesque or a one-legged RDL, they have to underload because they're unstable. So they won't, lift a re they won't lift a heavy enough load because they're unstable. So a split stance RDL is my preferred choice here. So yeah, so just have your right leg forward, left leg split, and away you go. Yep. 
it's good. So shouldn't be bothered by this too much at all. It's good form and technique look pretty good to me. Um, like anything with a hamstring focus, hip focus, we want to get that load into the heel. We want to make sure they're, they're feeling that stretch at the bottom of the, of the deadlift. 